my pleasure uh, to stand here in front of you uh, to be able to present our uh, project, the Future European Leaders Forum, to all the policymakers and other guests that are uh, viewing the Prague European Summit uh, online. So, uh, what are we doing here at Future European Leaders Forum, or shortly abbreviated FELF? Uh, is, as uh, Katerina mentioned, we are aiming to bring uh, 30 exceptional young individuals uh, who are engaged in their, uh, in their fields of knowledge and expertise, uh, who have the passion to shape European politics and uh, their local politics as well. Uh, it's been three years since we firstly have started uh, doing this project and it, is, uh, it brings me great, uh, great pleasure to be able uh, to say that we have uh, gone through the learning curve, we have found out what works for, the, for our alumni and our participants and that we are able to provide them during the course of five days uh, these editions with the knowledge of how to shape policy, how to write a concise policy paper, how to uh, work more effectively to be able to uh, feature deep work and uh, also to find some time in your, uh, in your schedule to answer all these mails. So how to juggle all these responsibilities that uh, a future European leader for a uh, future European leader should have. Uh, what we aim to do, apart from uh, increasing capabilities of our, of our leaders, is that also we aim to uh, create an intergenerational and interprofessional dialogue uh, with our up and coming uh, leaders, with the senior. Uh, policy makers and senior in the sense that they're more experienced, of course. Uh, hopefully as well in the end to burst some bubbles uh, with the young and uh, bright ideas of our participants. Now it is my pleasure to welcome uh, first FELF alumni, Martina Vetrovcová, who's been a part of the last year's summit and is here to present her speech. Thank you. Vážené dámy, vážení pánové, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is a true honor and privilege to be invited to address such a distinguished group of professionals. Truth be told, I would much rather stand in front of you in person and engage in some lively conversations with all of you. But unprecedented times require innovative solutions. At this point, I would like to thank the organizers for making the Prague European Summit possible, despite all the uncertainties and additional effort involved in planning this event. My name is Martina Vietrovcová, and I'm a PhD candidate in political science at Heidelberg University, Germany. I have also co-founded a social enterprise called Momentum Novum, which strives to foster sustainable development. I was trained by Al Gore to become a climate reality leader, and I'm a future European leaders alumna. In my current research, I deal with the topic of solidarity in Europe. And in the next few minutes, I would like to share with you why I believe that global solidarity and effective international cooperation are needed now more than ever to overcome complex global challenges such as climate change. People my age grew up in a time when there was less conflict, more prosperity, and more freedom on the European continent than at any time in human history. And we happily took this for granted. We traveled, we studied abroad, we enjoyed free roaming. The events of this year have, however, reminded us that we must never take our freedom, democracy, and mainly our health for granted. Very often, events happening beyond our borders feel distant, and it is difficult for us to understand or identify with challenges others are facing. There will always be voices who say that what happens in the wider world is not our concern, not our responsibility. But that is simply not true. With the COVID-19 outbreak, it has become clear that viruses know no borders and that they do not care about our ethnicity, our political affiliation, or how much money we make. We should also not forget that the coronavirus pandemic is not the only global challenge humanity is and will be facing. 
There are countless conflicts happening in the world as we speak. Millions of people continue to live below the poverty line, and we are still far from stopping climate change. My point is that we all share only one planet, and that what happens in Melbourne, Cape Town, or Quito more or less directly affects us too. This brings me to a brief reflection on the current state of affairs in the United States. I don't know how about you, but I got very emotional during this year's presidential election in the US. Often people ask me, why do you care so much about something that is taking place on the other side of the globe and that you cannot even influence? To this I say, I do care because A, questions such as who occupies the White House significantly shape the course of events globally, and B, I truly believe that my words and actions do have an impact. In fact, I believe that every individual has an impact and that small-scale actions have the power to bring about positive change on a larger scale. To give you one example, this year's Prague European Summit has chosen climate change as its spotlight topic. When talking to people about climate change, I've heard some of them say, my one plastic bottle won't make a difference, so why should I even bother? My usual response to this is, all right, repeat this 7.8 billion times. Does it make a difference now? We must realize that we can't always count on others to solve our problems, but that we are required to act too. We must be the change we wish to see in the world. Of course, this takes time and effort. It requires the right frameworks, policies, resources, and most importantly, the right mindset. I really hope that we can soon move beyond the point where we discuss whether black lives matter, because they just do, whether climate change is real, because it just is, and whether women should have the same rights as men, because they just should. We must learn to respect each other, irrespective of age, gender, sexual orientation, race, color, ethnicity, or religion. Because only by listening to each other, learning from each other, respecting each other's views and differences, and seeking a common ground, we can succeed in resolving global problems. As I said before, the coronavirus knows no borders, but neither does our solidarity and our compassion. And this is why I'm extremely grateful that there are events like the Prague European Summit and the Future European Leaders Forum that strive to foster an open discussion and contribute to a positive change. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martina, for your wonderful speech. Uh, I just want to say that I'm really happy for you to be the part of the family and that you're able to uh, provide workshops and interesting uh, thoughts to our participants, and this time not only to them. So thank you once again. And now it is my pleasure to invite Danesh on the stage to give, her, to give us his thoughts on what's happening. Thank you, Yiji. Good morning, good morning, and good day. I have to say that, of course, we must thank all of the organizers at Europeum, IIR, and directly the Prague European Summit. However, I have here a list of names that you might not have heard. You were paying attention to the high-level speakers. I want to thank Aneta, Wojtek, and Andrzej, our technicians who ensured that the 25 European leaders who tuned into FELF were able to watch it, in spite of the fact that they come from 12 countries and were unable to travel here. I want to thank Theresa, who welcomed us every single day with a smile on her face, hidden behind a Prague European Summit mask. And I want to also thank Natalie for preparing the program, making sure we stick to it, and Jakub, who's watching online but cannot be here today. And beyond this, Philip, who took us photographs, Huyen, who managed our logistics so excellently, Michal, who waited on us and ensured we always had lunch in spite of the fact we were very, very late, and Anton, Spasiba. You kept the hotel open for us at all times. Yaroslav, you drove us always on time, and you really put effort into making sure that we understand how important it is that Czechs are happy that there are no pesky tourists messing up the Charles Bridge and that you are freely able to walk across, and yet we ruined it by arriving here. <laughs> 
And I want to say also thank you to Zsuzsa Stuchlikova. I've been here for the third time now, and every single time I come here, you welcome me with open arms. I want to share with you an alarming statistic. According to Eurostat, 17.1% of young EU member state citizens are unemployed currently. Many of them may be watching us today. Therefore, it is clear that our political, economic, and social system is at a breaking point from the perspective of young people. That is why it is immensely important that in spite of the difficulties, young leaders were able to gather, to debate, and to discuss, and to realize what we all know to be true. Namely, that in spite of the fact that Martina comes from Kladno, and I hail from Taliandurugd, the hopes and dreams of Europeans across this continent and the challenges we face are common and require that we come together in order to overcome them. Yiji, for example, his ancestors and mine were fighting a century ago on the borderlands of a ruined empire where Hungarians and Czechs no longer felt at home. And yet, a hundred years after, here we are, building one common European home, and all of the 12 countries that were represented by young leaders, those 25 people would agree that we are building a more equitable, a more fair, and perhaps most importantly, a union where all can feel at home. And perhaps that's the answer to that age-old question that Czechs ask. Kde domov mui? Where is my home? It's Europe. And I have to say that in spite of the difficulties, as Martina mentioned, solidarity is very important, and I want to show you something. This is a mask that was fabricated here in the Czech Republic. I ordered it online in Hungarian. It was made from Slovak cotton, and I checked. The company has huge investments from Poland. This is a Visegrad 4 mask, and we have to come together as a V4, as the Three Seas Initiative, and as one united European Union. But I beseech the leaders who are watching today, involve young people, listen to their ideas, and involve them in the decision-making process. Because you were once our future, and one day they will be yours. And most importantly, perhaps of all, I have to say that we have to keep hope that although things are very bad currently, they can be better. And to share an old-age Hungarian poem, Még jönni fog, még jönni kell egy jobb kor. There must come, and there shall come, a better age. And in that spirit, the European one, the motto being, of course, united in diversity, I want to say we should be always united in adversity as well. And we should look at the positive examples, the ones that bring us together. And I'm reminded of our talk yesterday with Vladimir Bartovic and Milena Hirdenkova about the Minority Safe Pack Initiative, a European citizens initiative that has united every Czech political party represented in the two chambers of your parliament, all of them in the European Parliament, and also your government supports it. There is consensus on such a subject that could change the fate of 50 million EU member state citizens who speak one of 60 national or regional minority languages. So therefore, keep the faith. We'll see you next year. The Future European Leaders Forum of the Prague European Summit is signing off. Děkuji monokrát, kusenem sepen. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Dennis, for your wonderful speech. Uh, I think what has been amplified in both of the messages is very important. And uh, we as uh, young people, we obviously uh, want to have a say. So thank you for including us into this program. Uh, you can be looking forward to what we propose during these five, uh, five day workshops in the future after we debate it tomorrow with Mr. Uh, Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, Tomáš Petříček, who will hear our, our proposals and then uh, we will obviously publish them on our website. So you can, if you're interested, you can uh, look up what the young people have to say and uh, work with us on these solutions that we believe are beneficial for everybody. Uh, that's something I've been mentioning in my introduction. I sincerely think that intergenerational dialogue is crucial to us finding uh, uh, common goals and common solutions to everything. So thank you very much once again, uh, Martina, and thank you very much, uh, Danesh, for coming up here, saying your messages, and thank you very much, the others, for including us in this, and I'm looking forward to working uh, together with everybody uh, f to, to finding uh, uh, common solutions to our common problems. Thank you, and uh, have a nice day.